<laughs> Sorry about my friends. Uh, go for it, Stephen. The existence of beer is God's proof that he wants people to be happy. For decades, I kept these famous words that Ben Franklin allegedly spoke at the forefront of my mind. Ask anybody, I love being happy. Sadly though, I learned the quote was never actually spoken. It was commercially created to sell beer. For the past 24 years, it sold beer to me. <laughs> Living in Bozeman, a town created 100 years after Franklin's death, being happy is a way of life. And despite our current growing pains, it's steeped in eternal joy and never ending splendor. Bozeman's the best. There's nothing better than skiing, hunting, running, and raising a family. Living the dream is no cliche, it's a fact. Throughout my Bozeman existence, I've continued to be happy with beverage in hand. For years, there was a ceremonial approach to my consumption. I've had countless beers on the Yellowstone, after skiing at Bridger Bowl, hunting in the mountains, and I can promise you that I definitely stop at the Conoco for a tall boy after stressful Big Sky work days. My tolerance was impeccable. So impeccable that upon my primed arrival home, I continued to drink, searching for that initial sip feeling that contains the fizz of the foam, the sharp smell, and the cold bite. I'd drink till I dropped, seven days a week, happily carrying on my duties as a husband, father, boss, and friend. Holidays were often a call for heightened consumption. The in-laws are coming over, there's a work party, dinner out after kids' performances, Rob Pertzborn's by our fence, it's Halloween, it's Thanksgiving, it's Christmas, it's New Year's, it's the Super Bowl. No matter what day of the week or month, there seemed to be a justifiable excuse for me to have a delicious drink in my hand, literally any time. 20 plus years of wash, rinse, repeat, and a war of attrition. On my liver, I'd wake up with a headache every day. My mind would often float towards the soft notes of a pale ale. My body was tired, irritable, stressed, and with moments of clarity. Within the static that's adult life, I questioned this relationship. It seemed I really didn't have a choice. Alcohol was a requisite accessory that governed everyday life. Despite efforts to stymie palpable thoughts, my mind is an evolving Rolodex of sage sense. Many messages were easy to follow, like Mr. Franklin's. Hangovers are temporary, but drunk stories are forever. And who says you don't need running shoes to run? Uh, but amidst a work week of self-imposed challenges, I remember that if you think something's a problem, it probably is. So after pickling pandemic holiday season of 2021, I stacked these words of wisdom against those of Mr. Franklin's while brushing my teeth with another headache. Who was I drinking for and could I stop? These questions, coupled with the mystery of self-doubt, led me to give dry a try. On January 1st, 2022, I set out on a 31-day journey into the abyss that could be dry January. First half of the month was an act of brute force. After work, I'd reluctantly buy a yerba mate, waiting for the initial bite to take hold and calm me. I'd come home, avoid the fridge at all costs, blankly staring at the walls in withdrawn silence. Everywhere I looked, there seemed to be alcohol asking me to drink it, and I really wanted to. In desperation, I tried other beverages to connect with my cravings. I choked through iced teas and a variety of carbonated waters. Thankfully though, before an angsty night at archery league where I'd be surrounded by friends and lots of temptations, I learned about Athletic. It was a non-alcoholic microbrew. With skepticism and curiosity, I bought a six pack and was elated with the full body, hoppy aroma, malty flavors, and crisp kick. My primary thought was these savory sippers could get me through the month and to the end of this juxtaposed journey. Curious how this near beer could be so good, I investigated the company and industry. Created by entrepreneurs with a desire to positively affect customers' health and happiness, while better impacting communities' environments seemed like a fun business to support for the next few weeks. In 2017, Athletic canned their first creation and rose to the top of the NA market, negating the notion that a good nip had to have alcohol in it. They're the 26th fastest growing company in America of any business, and they've had a three-year growth metric of 13,000%. They've won awards at festivals around the globe, at times beating competitors with actual alcohol in their cans. Ironically, February 1st not only ended dry January, but it's my birthday. I awoke with the present of accomplished smile and I sauntered, sauntered through the day, feeling happy, and I thought as I slipped into the night, I'd want something to drink. I learned late in the day of a party at open range with some of my closest friends. As I apprehensively walked into the bar, my senses fired with the aroma of beer and the quintessential clinking of glasses mixed with the cheers of my friends, excited to celebrate my birthday and the end of a dry spell. I stared down the barrel of the double IPA placed in front of me. With contemplative countenance, I looked through the foam and it all became very crystal clear. I hadn't been sober since I was 18. With a pivotal breath, I passed the persuasion down the line and asked about their NA selections. Years ago, options wouldn't be opportunities under the authority of alcohol. 
Many companies have joined in the revolution, giving the world progressive and tasty alternatives. As the sober calendar advance, I was asked, do you feel so much better? And my response was, no, not really. I've just noticed how bad I actually felt. In May of 22, with beverage in hand, after a week of meetings and miles of plaster footage, my son asked how many NAs it would take to get drunk. <laughs> I smiled and I did the math. With half percent or less of alcohol by volume, it's actually impossible. The 12 ounce beer contains 5% and three would have me face down. I'd need to guzzle 30 in one sitting. With such low volumes of actual alcohol, manufacturers can't legally call their products beer. So instead, the market's collectively shifted to naming them brews. It's a nomenclature that describes a product with much less alcohol than over-the-counter mouthwash, elixirs, and sometimes even ripe bananas. <laughs> it's made through several techniques. Many remove the alcohol after fermentation with heat. Some limit fermentable sugars, and others brew concentrated batches and dilute them with water. All methods are extra steps that at scale cost money, and most humans make choices with their wallets. Since 2016, the market's shown a steady increase in sales, with a large percentage to be occupied by next year. The increase in sales, coupled with tax breaks, should allow breweries to scale operations, bringing their price down while elevating their impact on the world. I hope that the rise in awareness, decline in price, and ultimately increased sales will cast compounding smiles upon many, as it's done for me. As I look back on the days when my life was a haze, I'm not really ashamed of the thousands of beers I've drank. I've shared magical moments with friends and family that have given me the, per the perspective to praise the market. I plan on maintaining my happiness with this paradigm while continuing to be a father, a husband, an employer, outdoorsman, and an advocate for desired sobriety. And if you see me after the show sometime around town, let's have a brew, because I think you'll be happy. <laughs> <laughs>